G'day Internet, and uh, we're back with another episode in the uh, Improving Your secure, secure Code Review Skills. This time we'll be looking at uh, a C-based web server um, and exploiting some vulnerabilities there. Before I get into the code review, though, I wanted to do a quick recap. Back in episode one, I said the one thing that's going to make you improve your secure code review skills is experience. That means actually doing code review. So I've had a few people reach out to me um, with questions about the series, and that's great. I'm always happy to answer questions. Um, wouldn't mind if you leave them below uh, on YouTube so that the community can see them. Other people might have the same question as you. Um, so if you're comfortable asking in a public forum, um, that would be great. But the one thing that has stood out to me is that it, some of the people asking questions may not be practicing. So if you're now on episode seven in the series and you haven't broken out the terminal and done code review along with this uh, and practice what uh, is shown in the video uh, in other code bases uh, and gone out and found some bugs, um, now's the time. Maybe just pause this video, go back and work through all of the other ones and then come back to this one and then do this one as well. Um, really the only thing that helps you get faster at analysis, get better at analysis, get better at recognizing patterns, etc., is to do it. Um, so please, you know, if, if you're working on this, sync the hours in. Um, that may seem privileged, but whatever time you can spare, um, to improve your skills, um, you know, it's going to to pay off in the end because it builds the the skill set and the experience uh, that you need for this. Okay, with that out of the way, um, let's have a look at today's candidate. Um, so we're looking at something called Tiny HDBD. Now, this one is known to have a directory traversal. Problem. I'm not going to look at the exploit here. Um, you can if you want. If you want, so there, I'd say probably the biggest problem with Tiny HTTPD is there is a lot of Tiny HTTPD code bases on GitHub. Um, I picked this one here. As you can see, it's I'm less than six years old. Uh, overall, the code base appears to be even older than this. Um, but it's a pretty simple example. It's it's a self-contained one file with a C code. Um, so I'm going to switch to uh, a dev environment, um, look at the code, and do the exploitation. Back in a sec. Okay, so we're back in the code base for this. Um, like I said, it's a it's a single file. So I have this one open here. Um, it's not too many lines, so we're just going to start reading this from the top. And uh, yeah, for the comment, uh, this code base is pretty old. Start with some includes. Um, it appears this particular version has threading disabled. Um, and there's not too many functions. So there's an accept request, some error handling, um, some parsing, and then um, the bit that serves the content. So we'll start off by looking at the accept request function. Character array, obviously, when it's uh, whenever we're dealing with C code, buffer overflows is 
um, something worth looking at. Um, so we have a few defined here, this buffer. Um, judging by that comment, I can see socket. Um, I assume that means it's reading from the socket into the, the buffer. Uh, we have a method, so that's typically the, or I assume the HTTP methods and the get the post head, um, etc. A, a URL, which is probably the, the path from the get request or the post request. A path, probably the actual file path. Um, we'll notice that query string being dynamic size, they've uh, not used the fixed size character array, but it's rather a, a pointer. Uh, and then we have some space uh, checking. Uh, and this is something that's typically, um, or sometimes a problematic pattern. And that's iterating through a, a string, one character at a time, taking from the buffer and, and basically duplicating it. Uh, and obviously, if you can exceed either of these buffer sizes, you either have a an out of bounds read or an out of bounds write. Um, however, we can see that this one is bounded by the, the size of method, but not necessarily buffer. Now, buffer being a bigger array uh, here, that should all be safe and fine. Um, this should read out the get, post, add, etc. request. We can see here we are comparing that to make sure that it is either a get or a post, uh, or it's uh, returning uh, unimplemented. Presumably, that's an error message saying that this method doesn't exist. So, no support for head. Um, and then do an additional check that if it's a post. So all post handling is CGI requests. Okay, that's unusual, but uh, might have been a lot less usual in 1999. Then we have a bit that just skips white space. So that's the delimiter between get and the path that we are querying. Uh, and then we're reading out the size of URL. And this one is bound check for both buff and URL so that you can't overread. Still shouldn't be able to with 255 plus 255. Um, but it's, it doesn't hurt. So this should write out the you know, slash index HTML or whatever uh, into the URL. And again, you can't buffer overflow because um, it's bounds checked. And then we have an additional handling for get methods that looks for a query string. Uh, and if the query string exists, then this must also be CGI script. Um, again, something that's probably topical for 1999. I know some of my early programming experience was writing pair based CGI scripts. So, um, yep. Um, and then again, sprint def into path. Um, Sprint having strings into uh, character arrays is usually a bad pattern. Uh, in this case, path is declared as 512 and URL as 255. So even with concatenating index HTML on afterwards, uh, you'll not be overflowing that buffer. And then checking that the file exists. Uh, 
And then if it's if if the path is a directory, then um, it appends index HTML. So um, if you're requesting a, a URL that ends with a directory, um, that's standard web server behavior. Um, okay, and we're handling um, execute permissions, CGI, uh, and if it's not CGI, we save the file. Uh, else, execute CGI. Yeah, so we have a cat that basically just reads a file, uh, error message, or error handling, execute CGI. And so reads headers. Just discards them. Just <laughs> okay. Uh, in the case of post, it also reads header and then checks for the content length. Uh, um, <clears throat> okay, so in the case of a post, we are iterating through. Um, we're checking the headers, um, particularly content length. That seems to be the only, it's the only header it's checking. Um, and then uh, reads. Do anything with the content length. Um, yeah, setting up a pipe, forking. Um, now here we have some buffer overflows. Um, essentially, no, I don't. Based on the if statements, I don't believe you'll end up ever end up here with uh, a method that it's not either get or post. Um, but the reason why this is problematic is the method character array was declared as 255 in the accept request uh, query environment is essentially arbitrarily long. So it could be much longer um, than 255. And um, the length, I'm not sure what length that is. Um, but let's say that method was 255. In this case, we are prepending uh, that about 15 characters, um, which means that you're writing 15 plus 255 into a buffer that's 255. Um, so you are overflowing. And again, I don't know if you'd be able to exploit that one. Um, but it is it is a local stack variable. So this is a problem. Um, similarly the the query string um, could buffer overflow because we have here uh, 255 character and we are as printing into this variable for this character array. Again, approximately 15 characters plus, and then query string is just a, a pointer to a, a string, so the, the length is arbitrary. Um, so this one I'd say is definitely um, problematic. Uh, and then obviously content length uh, being a percentage D, um, that should not Actually, that's something I would have to, I'd have to run a test on. I don't know if you can get percentage D to print out such a long string uh, of numbers that would 
uh, XC255. Um, and then to execute the path uh, and exit. And, um, also does some handling of uh, typically CGI will read from standard in parse post data and it will print uh, output standard out um, so this will press on constant length uh, receive and then write and I'm going to go into the this is all buffer messaging and headers and error messages and stuff um, the other thing is we saw from the the Google queries, we know this as a directory traversal, um, which comes from this parsing table one, um, the URL. So the only the only thing that um, happens when parsing URL is it, it makes sure that it, it's not a space and that it's not um, too long. So up to 255 characters, it will just append each one of them to URL. Um, if we look at the URL, speak with it, please me. There is no additional change. So it reads straight up the socket and then does the sprint of path into HD dot. So obviously dot and slash um, will get you to Um, traverse. So we can just start up a version of this this particular one. Um, this one has a um, pre-compiled binary here, so I don't even have to compile it. Um, otherwise, it be usual make cc. Um, and we can now verify that this works. Uh, this one runs on port uh, 8008. And um, we can see that we have David's web server. And we can Should really set this up with read line. Uh, oops. Do I need more more slashes? Shouldn't need that many. Hmm. Let's try this. Maybe Carol is doing something. Uh, it's quite possible that we're dealing with URL encoding. Uh, let's just manually craft a uh, request. Of that to the web server. And uh, yeah, that gets us the EC password. Uh, <clears throat> so we won't be using curl uh, for exploitation of this. We'll just manually craft uh, the packets. So confirming what was uh, on the exploit TV description that we have a directory traversal, uh, you can hit uh, each password. Um, that's good, but we can we can do something that's even more fun. Because if we look at the execute CGI command, 
scroll down a bit. Uh, yes, we see here that we are duplicating um, standard inset, standard out. So um, I was right about that. Uh, and here we, we're calling XXCL to path. So we could we could potentially um, do something like in SH. it'll execute. And then because it's reading from standard in, we should be able to feed it data to run. Uh, obviously in order to do that, we need to provide content length. So we saw that it, uh, it's reading based on that. So let's just give it 100 characters. And we'll skip down here. Um, but how will we know that we've been successful? Well, let's do echo win into NRAR. We'll run that. And look here, WinRAR, a bid, with win. So we now have code execution. Um, leave that file there. Um, just make sure that the server is still running. Um, this does have a tendency to crash uh, during exploitation. Um, okay, um, obviously a more fun um, thing to do would be to have a, an interactive shell. So let's do that. Let's run the, A bin bash. We want to make that a little fine shell. So at least not 444. And once the shell is finished, we will want to call exit um, so that the bin SH isn't hanging waiting for its next um, command. And then I also want to make sure that this. Netcat isn't sitting here for all eternity. So when we do that, um, there's the time up in a sec. Now we should be able to connect to the host. Let's see that we are running um, code. And if I exit that, that should exit bin SH, which means that if it so we have connection refused. And if I run it again, we should hopefully get shell a second time. So we now have uh, repeatable, uh, repeatable code exec. Um, and we didn't even have to go to the extent of trying to uh, abuse one of those um, potential buffer overflows. Um, so we'll, we'll kill this one. Um, there is another uh, problem with this, which I, I haven't actually dug into. Oops. Um, too closely. Um, and that is, if we, if we provide a post, no data, we try to read um, large content, it will, uh, it will crash the server. Um, so now if we go to connection refused. Um, so this out of bounds read uh, appears to crash the server, but I haven't exactly worked out why. Um, and that's that's it for this review. Now you might think this is a, a unusual uh, or hard to uh, you know be in an old code base, but 
actually last year in 2021, uh, at the Apache web server had a directory traversal in its CGI handling that was exploitable exactly the same way. So you'll still find this in other places. Um, in conclusion, even old code uh, is relevant to modern exploitation. Um, and that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, the next episode will be going through the challenge from episode six, um, explain some of the different options. And then after that, we'll probably do a summary and wrap up the series. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Um, remember, go out, practice this, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.